What we also saw from the March revenue estimates, as I mentioned, revenues have been much higher than expected, but because of constitutional limits, so because of TABOR, um, we are not allowed to keep those revenues. So what we know from um, legislative council, who are the folks who uh, give these estimates, we are expected to give back nearly $2 billion in the next coming year. So those are dollars that the state cannot keep to invest in K-12 education, to invest in affordable housing or homelessness initiatives, to invest in healthcare. Those are dollars that have to go out the door. I'm gonna try not to bore you with too many charts. Um, what we see here, so what I circled in red, that 1.7, so that's what's gonna go out next year in TABOR rebates. So when you do your taxes next year, you'll, you'll see a line on your Colorado taxes. They say uh, sales tax refund. Those are the dollars that are going back to nearly $2 billion uh, because of how much the state has collected and, and cannot keep because of TABOR. So those dollars are will be going back. As you can see, a lot of um, the, the dollars that the state collects over a cap that it has to return, we return them three different ways. Property tax exemptions, so that's uh, the senior homestead exemption is paid out through TABOR rebates in the years that we have them. Um, there's a temporary income tax rate reduction if that if we have enough money that is triggered. And then the last is, or the catch-all, is the sales tax refund. And so because we're returning so much money in these next few years, we will all see a little bump in our uh, tax returns next year. That shows you the same information. Um, so as you can see, if you are a tax filer, let's say, who makes less than $47,000, you're getting about a little over a $300 check, TABOR rebate check. If you're a joint filer, that is doubled. So as you can see, um, the way that we distribute those TABOR refunds, if you are someone in the higher income group, anywhere, uh, you know, $250,000 and over, um, you can be making upwards of $1,000, $2,000, depending on your joint returns. Right, Esther, what the sales tax refund, sales taxes are collected by anybody who buys something in the state, correct? Correct. So some of that sales tax refund is, is from taxes collected from people from outside of the state, is that correct? That is correct, yes. So anyone who buys a tangible good and that is subject to the sales tax, whether you are a Colorado resident or a, a tourist, um, folks, all those folks play that, pay that uh, sales tax. Question? Yes. Will there will be an, um, a line item on like tax return as a credit, not a check being sent back? It'll be a line item on your tax return, and I believe it says sales tax refund. Treasurer Young, am I right? I, Maybe. I can't answer that because I'm uh, the Department of Revenue. The Department actually, of Revenue would answer that. Um, I, I believe I, I checked and it says sales tax refund, but you'll get it with your um, your tax return. So if you do a, a, a check or direct deposit, either way, it'll go um, to your account or you'll get a check if you choose a check. Yes. I don't understand. You're talking about this is money going out the door. This is money coming back to us as taxpayers and we love it. This is very, very positive. It's, it's a great thing, right? It, it is, it is, a it, it is uh, quite a bit of money. Yeah. It is quite a bit of money um, and, and we know especially for a lot of folks still struggling to recover from this pandemic. A uh, $300 check is well received and, and I totally kidding. hear this you. Is, oh, I'm surprised you're not saying this is terrific that you can give this money back. My right. point, and, my and point and on that, Frank, is, is um, to, to talk about that, why I asked that question. Because it's sales tax, we didn't necessarily put this tax money in. So we're well, getting no, money back that point. we didn't even put in That's necessarily. Awesome. That's well, great. I think it's not, in my opinion, because we have so many services that we have to try to pay for. Um, if we're complaining about mental health being the last in the country, if we're complaining about um, education being the least, one of the least funded in the country, we can use these funds for those services that we need that as a society we've committed to supporting. All of us are supporting that whether we have kids in school or not. All of us are supporting mental health. You have the homeless problem. I mean, go downtown and even moving down into the suburbs. We have people who are um, addicted to drugs, uh, substance use and mental health problems uh, that can't afford to get their way out of there. We can complain about them. We can say, let's put them in jail or we can try to help them. 
But to help them, we need to find those resources to do that. And to me, that's what one of these is, especially with sales tax. Go ahead. And my sister and many, many other people with intellectual and developmental disabilities who can't find essential services to keep them alive. So, over, go ahead. So, I found out my refund under Tango for the year 2021 was $49. I am not rich. But $49 means nothing to me. I need that money to go to benefit our state. So we have opposing views. And I know people who are very rich who want every little dime they can get. And our education is not funded and we have all kinds of problems. I think that, you know, so we got opposing views. Thank you, Senator Coulter, for your response to that. I just wanted to chime in. These conversations are good for our community and that's why we do these types of things. But Denver has, Denver and Colorado has been the number one destination for talented, educated millennials, which bring in new ideas and are eventually going to fund the services we need as we age out of a competitive marketplace. They're actually paying for our future supports by doing this. And one of the things that attracts them is a clean city that's safe to live in, that cares about other people, that has good healthcare support, that has a wonderful education program, good parks, libraries, and on and on and on. And if we don't take excess funding when we have the opportunity to do that and invest in the things that attract those young people and only satisfy ourselves with shortfalls when we don't raise enough revenue, we will eventually bankrupt our own state and become an unattractive place to be. And the only people that will be here are the people that cannot leave. That's it, thank you. So, um, one of the candidates, David, said a triple birthday, and it's sort of our problem is, You'll get a little bit of this money back, but then your property taxes are going to go up, or they'll—it'll it, it'll have to get made up some other way. It seems to me. So, so instead of keeping our property taxes at a level lower, what you're saying is with Tabor crippling our state, um, if the sales tax especially is what's concerning to me. Because sales tax is what people are buying. It's not just people who live here. It's people who come in. I mean, we have—we are a tourist destination. And so we get this money from out of state and now we are redistributing it to people within the state. And to me, that that is something that I really would like to see the sales tax, especially um, stay here within the state uh, and be used by the state because it could then help us reduce the, the problems that we're having with property taxes as they're going up, um, help us with uh, other issues with the IDD, uh, you know, supporting the intellectually developmental disabled community, the, the mental health community, so. More. Yeah, exactly. first responders. Yes, exactly. And Teachers, those kind of things. Right. Right. You think about the most conservative states in the nation. They won't touch this. Right. So, it, so go ahead. Thank you. A great discussion, and, and thank you all for for sharing your sentiments and. Uh, very much so. I, you know, we, we at CFI we try to be very conscious of folks are still struggling, um, and so a, a three hundred dollar check sounds great. Um, and at the same time, we know, as Senator Coker said, we rank dead last, so fiftieth in starting teacher pay compared to every other um, um, job in the state of Colorado. We rank fiftieth in uh, starting teacher pay, and so we really try to recognize that it, it's paper. You know on the tape presentation but since we've been talking about it um Tabor is really crippling us is there there are much better ways to be able to support communities to be able to have a progressive income tax Tabor doesn't allow us to do that we tax all the the income at, at the same flat rate right so there are there are so many conversations and so many ways that we can rethink and reimagine and restructure um, our state tax system and Tabor is a big issue in that and, and a big reason why you know we're, we're having this debate of $300 could really help me, but all of these state public services and public investments are really crippling and struggling because we can't invest those dollars um, in all of these services that we rely on. 